Hola y bienvenidos a nuestra clase, Se Habla Español. Welcome to our Spanish class. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us in this introductory Spanish course. Yo me llamo Kathleen. Y yo me llamo Carlos. Y nosotros somos sus profesores de español. Learning a new language takes time and effort. But we hope that our course will guide you through the first semester of Spanish and the basic elements of the language. In each module, you will see a variety of activities, such as grammar lessons, new vocabulary, a review section called Practica, as well as lessons on aspects of the Spanish-speaking culture. There are many reasons to learn a new language, and Spanish is one of the most popular second languages to learn. Learning a new language opens new doors and will give you insight into another culture. The culture of the Spanish-speaking world is extremely diverse. Spanish is spoken in North, South, and Central America, as well as in Europe and some parts of Africa. By learning Spanish, you will also be able to communicate with over 400 million people throughout the world. But you don't need to travel very far or even leave the country to practice speaking Spanish. In many cities throughout the U.S., one can find places such as Old Town San Diego, where the culture and the language of Mexico are vibrant and alive. Old Town San Diego is considered the birthplace of California. San Diego is the site of the first permanent Spanish settlement in California. It was here in 1769 that Father Junipero Serra came to establish the very first of the California missions. In the 1820s, a small Mexican community of adobe buildings was formed and the community was given the title of El Pueblo de San Diego. Today, in the city of San Diego, there are markets, restaurants, and neighborhoods where you can appreciate the fountains, archways, and tile work of Spanish architecture, hear the music of mariachis, and enjoy the foods that are native to the Americas and today's Spanish-speaking populations. In every major U.S. city, you will find neighborhoods where Spanish is spoken and the culture is celebrated. There are approximately 28 million Spanish speakers in the United States, making Spanish the second most common language spoken in the U.S. After Mexico, Spain, Colombia, and Argentina, the U.S. has the fifth largest Spanish-speaking population in the world. There are 21 countries where Spanish is spoken as the official language. And that brings us to the name of our program, Se Habla Español, which means Spanish is spoken. Where is Spanish spoken in the world? Se Habla Español en Argentina? Se Habla Español en Peru? Se Habla Español en Puerto Rico? Y en Cuba? Vamos a ver donde más se habla Español. Okay? Muy bien. All right. So we're going to look at some maps. Okay. And we're going to talk about the different countries where Spanish is spoken. Muy bien. Okay. Let's, start some regions. With, let's start with the European continent. Okay, vamos a empezar con ¿Dónde España. ¿Dónde se habla español? En España se habla español. Muy bien. Okay, muy bien. Bueno, Spain is a very diverse country in itself. Mm -hmm. Most people in Spain do speak Spanish, mm -hmm. but they speak other languages also, as well. Correct. Mm -hmm. They speak uh, in Catalonia, in the area around Barcelona. They speak Catalan, mm -hmm. which is a different language. Uh, in the area of Pamplona and San Sebastián, in the Basque, Basque region, they speak Vasco, mm -hmm. and then in La Coruña, they speak another language, Gallego. Right? Gallego. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, not only Spanish. Spanish is the most predominant, and it's the official language, but they speak other languages, too. So different regions have their own mm -hmm. regional uh, languages. Mm -hmm. Is it true to say that most Spaniards are bilingual? Uh, not all. Not no. all. No. Some people don't have a regional language. Correct. Mm -hmm. Some don't, yes. And historically, I mean, Spain is very much similar to England in that they, in the English came to the U.S., they settled, they brought their culture, their language, and Spain brought their culture, language, and religion to the Americas. Mm -hmm. They brought it to Mexico, to Peru, to different regions in, in, within Latin America. Yes. And, and they, they were invaded, too, by the Moors. That's right. There were a lot of people living in Spain before mm -hmm. the Spaniards even came Correcto. to the Americas. Who were the Moors? The Moors, the Arabs. Uh -huh. So they uh, settled in Spain for close to seven, over 700 years, uh, over seven centuries. And you can see that influence, especially in the southern region of Spain, in Andalusia, uh -huh. uh, in the area of Cordoba, Sevilla, Granada, very close to the African uh, country okay. of Marruecos or Morocco. 
on the African continent, and you see the influence everywhere in the architecture, in the uh, in the people itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's the food, the, the music, food, the music. Mm -hmm. Yes, very present in that area. Well, so, what is there to do in Spain today? What do we? Uh, what do young people or travelers cosas. do in Spain? Okay, in Spain there are many places to visit, many things to see. And of course, Madrid, being the capital of Spain, uh -huh. is one of the most exciting capitals in the world. And so there's a lot of uh, activities to do there, a lot of nightlife for, for people that like that you know, uh, type of activity. Sure. There's uh, among the best in the world. But there's also amazing museums. Uh, mm -hmm. One of my, famous, my most uh, uh, favorite museums in the world, El Prado, is in ah, Madrid. El Museo del Prado. And they have uh, paintings by El Greco, which is my favorite painter. Uh -huh. uh, they Velázquez. have Velázquez. And very close to there is the Museo de la Reina Sofía. Oh, it's the Modern Art Museum. Mm -hmm, the Modern Art Museum, mm -hmm. where they have uh, paintings of Picasso and, and Dali, Dali and Miro. So, oh, yes, many, many artists. So Madrid, plenty to do. You can catch football. Uh, Soccer games, football. Ah, football. Uh, that's go to the national fights. sport, that's isn't it? That's the national sport, correct. Uh -huh. correct. And bullfights as well. That's probably mm -hmm. second on the list. See? Si. Mm -hmm. And you've been to, have you been to Barcelona? I've been to Barcelona, okay. si. Muy que, bonito. ¿Qué te parece? Oh, es una ciudad muy bonita, mm -hmm. si? Okay. This beautiful city has um, a lot of different uh, architecture styles. What's mm -hmm. the name of the very famous architect? Gaudí. Gaudí. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the architecture of Gaudí's architecture is present throughout the city. Mm -hmm. From La Sagrada Familia, which is the cathedral, the church that still un is under construction. How many years? Many, many years oh, it's, it's been since under construction. The, I believe the early 1900s or late 1800s, and it will not be completed for another, you know, 10 or 15 years. Mm -hmm. So, yes, and there's parks, there's... Uh, apartment buildings that are all were all designed by Gaudí. By, by Gaudí. So mm -hmm. yes, the, the culture is there, this, his influence is there everywhere. Muy okay? bien. All right. Bueno, Vamos a, a México. America, a sí, México. A las Américas. Muy bien. Okay. So the, I, like we said earlier, the Spanish came, they settled, and uh -huh. Mexico became uh, one of their most important possessions yes, okay? as a colony mm -hmm. because of for many reasons. Uh, natural resources. Natural resources and the cultures that were present there, the mm -hmm. labor. The manpower. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Manpower. And so Mexico became known as Nuevo, Nueva España. Nueva España. Muy the bien. new Spain. And so they brought the culture, they brought the language, and they brought the religion. Okay. But so. really what we see in Mexico today is a combination of what mm -hmm. the Spanish brought and mm -hmm. what the indigenous cultures already Correcto. were that so were here. Mestizaje, an uh -huh. influence of this, the, the different cultures, the European plus the, the native mm -hmm. uh, the indigenous cultures. cultures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in within Mexico, you even have different accents, different dialects. You have over 80 different languages spoken in Mexico. So again, more people. there are more languages spoken in Mexico besides Spanish. Correcto, yes. And, and these are native languages, indigenous languages. Native languages, languages. yeah, like mm -hmm. Nahuatl and Maya. Mm -hmm. So there's many, many. And uh, of course, Spanish is spoken everywhere. Mm -hmm. and, but there are a lot of people that are bilingual, even trilingual. They speak more than one language, mm -hmm. OK? And so the places to see in Mexico, oh, there are so wow. many different types of, uh, of uh, you know, tourist sites that you can visit from pyramids to the most amazing beaches in the world. Uh, a lot of fascinating things to do. ¿Qué lugares conoces? What places bueno, do you know? I know Cancun, mm -hmm. ¿verdad? And Cancun I think of as the honeymoon spot because so <laughs> many people love to go to Cancun for vacations, beautiful beaches of the Yucatan. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of my favorite places in Mexico. When I think of Mexico, I also think about the food. Probably my f most favorite of all the foods of the Latin American countries mm -hmm. are come from Mexico. And that's very diverse when we talk about food. The yes. food in the north and in the south are all different, aren't they? And again, the food has so much influence from the, from the uh, indigenous people uh -huh. and European too. But we rely on corn, we, re we rely on native vegetables and fruits that were that were native to the to the to area Americas. to the Americas so. and there's some very interesting foods that come from Mexico mm -hmm. uh, chocolate for chocolate example, right okay. something that the whole it's, world appreciates yes. today is native for uh, mm -hmm. a native uh, food from Mexico mm -hmm. All right. Right. so shall we go to another part Centro of the world America y el yeah. Caribe okay ah, Centro America y el Caribe not all of the Caribbean countries speak Spanish no but of course, Cuba, Cuba being uh -huh. one of the largest Cuba. islands, speaks Spanish. Uh, you have Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, a territory mm -hmm. of the United, of the United States. States. Mm -hmm. And República Dominicana, Muy bien. of course, speaks Spanish. And, uh, and then in Central America, you have, of course, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. And Guatemala has a big Mayan influence in mm -hmm. the country. So, 
and uh, Nicaragua, of course, and Costa Rica and Panama. And I've, I've been to Costa Rica, which is a fascinating country. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. A lot of uh, natural uh, parks, uh, which the country has uh, the most national the parks. most national parks probably of, of any, any country, country in the world. Mm -hmm. So it's beautiful there. And Panama, of course, the biggest uh, attraction there is the Canal de the, Panama. Muy bien, the famous Panama Canal. Panama Canal. Uh -huh. And during the construction, a lot of people don't know this, but people were brought in from many parts of the world, from China, from Jamaica, from different areas. So to you build have that canal. To build a canal. So in Panama, you have this cultural um, mix, mix diversity. that is mm -hmm. very, very interesting. Muy bien. So, okay. All right, vamos, vamos a Sudamérica. Vamos a Sudamérica. Okay. Muy bien, Perfecto. South America. So in South America, again, huge region. And of course, yes. uh, there are some countries where they don't speak Spanish, like Brazil, uh -huh. which they speak Portuguese. Portuguese. But then the rest of it, uh, Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, Spanish is spoken ever. Mm -hmm. In a lot of those countries, especially in the Indian region, in the Andes region, uh -huh. they speak other languages too, like Aymara or Quechua, which are Guarani. native Guarani. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Incas had a huge presence in that region. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, Argentina, again, huge country. And there were a lot of immigrants from Italy in that region yes. of Europe that came to Argentina. From Italy, from Germany, from France, from Spain. So yes. we tend to see very fair-skinned mm -hmm. people More in European that influence. southern cone. And mm -hmm. we also see a lot of uh, influences in the language, some different uh, expressions and a little bit different accent Correcto. in that part of the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the same thing with Uruguay. It's very similar to Argentina. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I've been to Peru. Peru is just a beautiful country. Oh, tell us about Cultural Peru. Cultural is fascinating. So, and actually in one of our classes, we will talk about some of the festivals there in Peru. Ah, muy bien. Uh, but it's just a beautiful, beautiful place to visit. So I plan to go back soon. Muy bien. So okay. after speaking Spanish, you'll be able to join us and visit all of these interesting places. See? Yes. So now let's talk about some of the things you can do to be successful at learning a new language. The first step is to lose any fear you may have about making mistakes. Of course you will make mistakes. It is part of learning. The only way to learn to speak Spanish is to practice speaking. Use every opportunity to speak and don't be afraid of sounding funny or making mistakes. Some people believe that it's impossible to learn a new language in adulthood. I had a chance to interview a friend who shared with me some good advice about how you can approach your language studies. Let's take a look. Hello, we've invited to our studio today Lee Kirkhoff. Lee is here to talk with us about how an adult learns language. Hola Lee. Hola. I'd like to talk to you about some of the myths and misconceptions that people have about how a language is learned. Um, I learned Spanish as an adult and I know you did as well. What are some of those misconceptions? Well, I think the most common misconception is that adults can't learn a second language. Mm. Uh, there's a widespread belief that after a certain age, our brains are simply incapable of absorbing another language other than the one we've learned as children. Um, and therefore, there's no point in trying to learn a second language because you're 20 or 30 or 40. It's just impossible. I think that's a really damaging myth because it discourages people from even making the effort to get started. Mm -hmm. And it's clearly not true. I know many people in their 20s and 30s who've learned a language, a second language, um, and have made great progress. Uh, last time I was uh, studying abroad, I met a couple in their 70s who had started to learn Spanish and made, had made great progress. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really important myth to be aware of. Um, another myth that is similar is that uh, the myth that some people are just naturally gifted at languages and they don't have to work at it. Um, and everybody else has to struggle. Clearly, there are people who struggle with learning languages, and there are people who advance very quickly. But I think the common denominator among people who do advance very quickly is that they're very diligent. They study, they work at it every day, they practice it. Um, and by doing that, it can seem as though you are a natural language learner because you're, you can make very rapid progress. So it's really all about the effort that you put into it. I think so, yes. Mm -hmm. So in what ways can we put effort into learning language? What are some practical or everyday ways to, to get good at a language? Yeah, that's the key idea, is, is to make an effort that is, that is uh, effective. Mm -hmm. And I think one way to do that is to start reading in the language as quickly as possible. Even, even beginners in a language can read, for example, children's books that are written for very young children. Um, 
and make progress, learn vocabulary, learn grammatical structures in a kind of a natural way. Um, but the advantage we have as adults over children is that our, our minds are much more sophisticated. So our progress is, is usually much more rapid. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, for example, uh, I think an adult learner who is diligent can progress through the grade levels of Spanish texts probably at, at the rate of one year every month. And by the end of a, a year of diligent work, can probably be reading at the high school level mm -hmm. of a native speaker. Um, so I think that's one important way to, to speed one's learning of the language. Um, another way, and this is the advantage that we have here learning Spanish in the United States, is that we can take advantage of the large Hispanic speaking population that's here and interact with people. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to activate your knowledge because uh, you're engaging with people who are native speakers who can correct you. Mm -hmm. and the best thing you can do when you're trying to speak a language is to make mistakes because when you make a mistake and then you're corrected you'll never forget it you'll remember it forever if it's on the page and you're trying to remember it you may you may not depends but if you make a mistake and you think about it it'll stick it'll stay with you so I think activating your knowledge by interacting with people uh, taking advantage of all the media resources we have in the United States is also important there's lots of uh, Hispanic TV stations throughout the United States. Every, every major metropolitan area has a Hispanic radio station. Mm -hmm. And now with the internet, it's possible to listen to radio stations from around the world uh, or to download even TV shows. And I think this is really important for, for people who are learning Spanish because the one thing you soon learn by exposure to the world of Spanish is that there's more than one kind of Spanish mm -hmm. in a way. And that the way they speak in Argentina, for example, is very different than the way they speak in Spain or in Mexico or in Los Angeles or in New York, in Brooklyn. So by exposing yourself to all of these different varieties, they're all similar. They all have the same foundation, but they expose you to the richness of the language. And that broadens your, your experiences of it, I think, mm -hmm. in a really important way. Any other suggestions about ways we can learn a language? I think one of the most important things you need to do is you need to work at it every day. Mm -hmm. You need to do at least something uh, productive in your studies every single day. What I, what I often say to people is that it's more important to study 10 or 15 minutes every single day than it would be to study four hours one day a week. Mm -hmm. It's a much more efficient use of your time and you'll learn more in the long run and simply trying to, to do it all at one time. Uh, an analogy I often use is uh, to exercise. Uh, people like to exercise to build their muscles and to get strong and to, to build their bodies. Um, but people who exercise never get to the point where they're, they're in perfect shape and then they can stop. Mm -hmm. If you do, you start to deteriorate. It's the same thing with languages. The, the more you work at it, the better you get. But if you don't work at it, you will start to lose it and you'll start to deteriorate uh, in terms of your just your facility with the language. So I, I urge people to, to practice as much as they can to do something every day. Read something, study a point of grammar, watch a TV show, listen to the radio, do something to keep going forward. Mm -hmm. Second thing I would advise people is um, that your, a, a language learner has to constantly review. Mm -hmm. Even when you're an advanced or intermediate stage. Uh, I think it's, it's really important every once in a while to kind of go back to the beginning and study the basic structure of verbs and the basic structure of prepositions, adjectives, the, the, the formal grammatical aspects of language. Because you'd be surprised how easy it is to, to start to, to make mistakes um, because you're not sure about the fine points. Mm -hmm. And the, the more you go back and review, the easier it gets, the quicker it gets, and the more it helps you to speak correctly, uh, and that, of course, helps you to learn more. Mm -hmm. What about grammar? Students are often scared by grammar. What do you think about learning grammar and the importance of grammar in language learning? I'm a big fan of grammar. I, I think it's really important. It can be overdone. Uh, I remember years ago when I was first learning German, which is the first language I acquired after I, my native language. Um, when I was learning German, it's a different language than Spanish, I spent too much time studying grammar. I only studied grammar. Uh -huh. 
And it, that was important, but it didn't help me to function in the language. It didn't help me to build my vocabulary. Um, whereas in Spanish, the grammar is somewhat less complicated than German, but still I think grammar is important. There's a common way that, that some people try to learn a language, and that is, oh, I'll just throw myself into it. I'll just immerse myself in the language. Um, and that works for some people, but I think for, for the most part, that can be a very frustrating experience because it's overwhelming. If you know grammar, at least a little bit, it gives you a structure. It, it gives you a sense of, okay, I don't know maybe what that word is, but I know it's a verb, and I know it's functioning in this way. And so that will help you to learn it down the road if you know what part of speech it is. Mm -hmm. But also, I think it gives you a framework in which to think and organize your, your learning of the language. These are wonderful points. Thank you Thanks. so much for sharing them with us. My pleasure. Thank you for being here. Thanks. Bueno, we'll be back in the studio now. I hope you have learned some wonderful tips to help you improve your language, uh, your language skills, and learn Spanish. Those were great ideas. I have had many students who believe that they are too old to learn a language, but that is not true. Some of my best students are older adults who really dedicate themselves to improving their language skills every day. It is very helpful to find places where you can practice speaking Spanish. For some students, it is with a neighbor or Spanish-speaking friend. Other students find it easier to practice Spanish when they are in a restaurant or a market. Wherever it is, the most important thing to do is to practice a little bit every day. Every language instructor has lots of good ideas and suggestions for how students can learn and improve their language skills. We have asked a few people to share some of their recommendations with us. Let's take a look. I would recommend that students practice their learning outside the classroom and that they do this on a regular basis. Uh, in the United States, there are many television programs and radio programs available in Spanish. And I believe that they should take advantage of this opportunity to practice their listening skills. To learn a new language, students need to be surrounded by people who speak that language that they want to learn. I recommend to the students, based on my own experience, to immerse completely into the language. For example, I recommend using sticky notes labeling things in your house. If you forgot, make sure you place it again, the sticky note, on the item that you don't remember. I like the idea about the sticky notes. Tell it's me, Carlos. It's a very good idea. How does it work? Okay, so you label things at home okay. with the little sticky notes and you place it on whatever object you want to learn. Okay. Vocabulary words, for example. So this would be computadora. Ah, so la you write computadora. on one of the sticky notes, okay. la computadora, or el ordenador, uh -huh. and you stick it on. And you label different things, different items. And so the, ob the objective is, every time you see this object, ah. you will look at the sticky notes and try to remember the word. Ah, muy bien. And once you've memorized it, then you're free to take it off. I because see. you already know it. Muy bien. So I could remember that you are el profesor. El profesor. And after I've practiced that and I've remembered it, uh -huh. then I can take off the sticky note and I'll know. Because you've learned it. You've memorized it. El profesor. It. Muy bien. And then the ones you have left, you know you have to place more importance on those and ah. you have to memorize it. And if I forget what it is, then I go mm -hmm. ahead and I put the sticky note you back on. You can put it back. Muy bien. Correcto. Buena idea. Okay. So what are some other suggestions? Let's wrap All up right. and summarize some of these good suggestions we've heard from the Very teachers. Very good. We've seen a few. So let's look at some of these. Okay. okay. Vamos a ver. And the first one is don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's a very big one. A lot of students don't want to say anything until they speak perfectly, and of course that will never happen. They feel intimidated, and especially in classes or when they go to restaurants, they feel intimidated because they feel they're going to make a mistake and people are going to laugh at them. And that's and not true. That's not true. And even if they do, who cares? That's right. That's the only way you're going to learn. You have to make mistakes. In People order made to learn. fun of me when I was learning English, uh -huh. and English is my second language. So. And how did you learn? Just by continuing to practice. Yes, but people laughed at me, and that's how I learned. Okay. Okay. That's a good yeah. one. Number one. All right. The second, practice every day. 
and this is one that was mentioned earlier, where it's very important to practice a little bit every day. It's more important to practice 10 minutes every day mm -hmm. than to wait and practice for two hours on just one day per week. Correcto. Mm -hmm. And practicing not only means doing your homework and, you know, uh, list, reading your, your book, but also going out and practicing with friends, with neighbors, like we said earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, a little, a, a few things per day is Finding people will to do talk a lot. To. Mm -hmm. Yes, Good. correcto. Okay. All right. Tercera. Find someone to speak to, speak with, which is the third one. Right. Okay. Do you have to find someone? And oh, in every region in the U.S. now, there is Spanish speaking, Spanish speaking populations everywhere. That's true. So it's no longer an excuse that oh, I don't have any Spanish speaking friends. Well. Chances are you do. Well, and chances are you'll find someone if you really mm -hmm. look. Uh -huh. Correcto. That's a good one. Muy bien. La cuarta, start reading right away. Ah, this is a good one because many people believe that they need to wait until they get to a certain level to start to mm -hmm. read. But there are books published for children in Spanish, and you can start right away mm -hmm. by reading stories or even read stories that you already know in English. Mm -hmm. Read them in Spanish, and, and you'll associate the new vocabulary with the story you already and know. And people don't have to buy them. They can go to the public library and, and check out books for children in Spanish That's and true. read them. Yeah. So it's gratis. Okay. All right, let's look at some more. Watch TV in Spanish uh, and the radio, too. That's okay? right. Muy importante. But TV, there's two networks, Spanish networks in the U.S. There are two Spanish networks in the U.S. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention the, <laughs> the, um, the, names, the, the of names of them, but there's two, and they're available pretty much everywhere, on satellite, on cable, and over the air, so they're free. So watch the news, watch the soap operas, watch the sports, it's, mm -hmm. it's going to help. Yeah, okay. and it helps to choose something that you like to watch and mm -hmm. watch those things. If you love sports, watch mm -hmm. sports in Spanish. Correcto. Mm -hmm. Okay. Radio. Okay. Lots of radio stations and lots of different kinds of music. Some mm -hmm. people think that Spanish music has one particular sound, but mm -hmm. that's not true. There's all sorts of music in Spanish. Correcto. And listening to music helps people to learn sometimes. You memorize words. Exactamente. Mm -hmm. Muy bien. Review what you have learned. Very good. Don't just keep continuing to move forward. Go back and look at things from previous chapters. Review things you've studied before. Constantly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And our last one is immerse yourself in language as much as you can. And that just means surround yourself. Do everything you can to be surrounded by Spanish. Okay. Mm -hmm. Muy bien. And again, like we told you, Spanish is pretty much everywhere. In here the United in the US. States, we're very fortunate that we have lots of places to practice, mm -hmm. lots of people to practice with. The culture, the food, the music, everything is around us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so that brings us to a close. We, this is the end of our first class, and we hope you will join us for our coming classes. Okay, que tengan un buen día, y nos vemos muy pronto. Muy bien, hasta pronto.